Alex Petrangelo's first goal in 27 games lifts VGK to a much-needed overtime win over the Bruins. We break it all down next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco and birthday boy Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcast, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Locked On Golden Knights. We are brought to you today by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. You can get up to a hundred dollars match on your very first deposit. Use the promo code Locked On NHL. So, Chris, a much-needed victory for the VGK last night over the Boston Bruins, 2-1 to one in overtime. Jack Eichel scoring his 19th goal on the power play in regulation. And Alex Peter Angelo Petrangelo, the drought of 27 games without a goal, is over as he scores on that 2-on-1. The Mark Stone assist in overtime. Logan Thompson back in net, and he only gave up the Grizzly goal. Uh, that deflected off of Alec Martinez, I believe, and VGK thin at several positions and almost got thinner last night. Mark Stone left the ice. He got uh, a shot on his right hand on a Lindholm shot, I believe that was. And then uh, Jack Eichel, Jackie Aces, he had an apparent skate issue, but he was hobbling off of the ice. He returned, and uh, that was... Uh, the, uh, again, that was an issue with his skate. And then uh, Pavel Zaka tried to take out uh, a la Ovechkin, what he did to Leonard. He tried to take out uh, Logan Thompson with that blast to the face mask that today he might have a little bump or bruise on his nose because it pushed the mask back, LT. But a gritty win for the VGK last uh, last night. A lot of moving parts on this team, as we know, a lot of injuries on this team. And just reflecting back on this game, if VGK goes on to repeat as cup champions, mark this win down as a pivotal win in this campaign on a night in which everyone else, except for Roth the Kings, had a, a one-point game, another overtime loss. Mark this down, though, as a pivotal game for the VGK because everyone in the division was winning. Uh, the Canucks could have been up by eight points in the Pacific if VGK lost this game. Yeah, I mean, we know the Pacific is going to be a tough five-horse race, and we'll see maybe if someone drops off in the next 15 or so games, maybe it's Golden the Golden Knights, maybe it's not the Golden Knights. Who, who knows? And watching last night's game, I mean, there was potential for Stone, Eichel, and Logan Thompson all to suffer injuries of, you know, varying natures and stuff. And you want to talk about a game that just has every level of imaginable drama possible. It was that game, right? I mean, you're watching, you're seeing only, what, 11 players on the bench instead of 13. And and then you realize it's Stone and Eichel that are not there. And then you look up, it's a 0-0 game, and the Golden Knights didn't look too bad, even without those players. So, you know, the Golden Knights, they have this gear, they have this ability, they have that Stanley Cup trophy that has taught them so, so much to, you know, about winning and what it takes and stuff. And I think you saw everything that this team had taken from their Stanley Cup win and apply it in different facets of the game last night. And you got to start with Logan Thompson. He was brilliant. Uh, Paul Cotter almost uh, screwed the pooch last night with that turnover right in front of him. But besides that, it was an absolutely remarkable game by Logan. I didn't even know that that the the one goal that got behind him, he actually deflected. So that's, uh, that's, that's good to know. It's kind of hard to tell from upstairs. But, yeah, huge game, huge victory, and... This is a game that you definitely would look back on if we had a reflection show, if they do win the Stanley Cup again, you know, back on January the 11th uh, when the Golden Knights got it all, you know, got things back together. So prior to the game, 
the latest uh, goaltending injury, Yuri Batera, undisclosed injury. Uh, you could tell us more about what Cassidy said in the post game. Caden Korzak back for the VGK as he missed seven games, I believe. And Giannis Ronbjerg was recalled for VGK. Cormier and Denisenko were sent back down to the AHL level. Yeah, Korzak will start there. Korzak, very good game. And no knock on Cormier. He just needs more time to learn the game. But Korzak is, I mean, it's probably as close as Ben Hutton is to just an, an everyday great plug-and-play NHL defenseman who's probably going to get a longer opportunity depending on how much longer uh, Shea Theodore is going to be out for. So Korzak, good to see him in the game. He seems strong, no worse for the wear. So that certainly was a welcome addition to the team. But back to the goaltenders. Uh, <laughs> undisclosed injury is what we saw flashing on the TV screen, which just made me laugh. Um <laughs> After the game, Cassidy did give an update on the entire goalie situation. So starting with Patera, this was the surprise of the night when Isaiah Seville took the ice. Patera was sore. He he was sore. He 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 was sore. That was what the official outlook was, the official recap from Cassidy. Um, so they brought Seville in because in his words, you want the backup needs to be ready to get in the game and contribute. And he felt Patera was not able based off of whatever happened the night before against the Avalanche. The bigger story is Aiden Hill. So Aiden Hill had been, per Cassidy, medically cleared, he felt, Monday or Tuesday. So the Golden Knight doctor said, you are good to go. No questions asked. Okay, fine. Supposedly... At the morning skates, Aiden wasn't feeling right. He wasn't feeling whatever whatever that means. He was not feeling 100%. So Cassidy made it a point to say in the postgame presser that unless Aiden's 100%, he's not going. I don't know. I was talking with Stephen Marsh last night after the game, and I don't know how much of this is reality versus, you know, just kind of talking through the media. Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean... Coach Cassidy's outlook on Aiden Hill made it seem like, okay, medical team says we're good, but Aiden says we're not. But there's a chance Aiden's going to go on Saturday. So maybe this isn't as bad as uh, he reaggravated another injury on the morning skate on Wednesday prior to the Avs game. or Yeah, Wednesday. So maybe this isn't that bad. Or maybe it's terribly bad. Or maybe it's anything and everything in between. Um but go back to Logan Thompson. A lot of people have been concerned about him and his ability. And you know, you look at the last last couple of games right now, these things are starting to get a little bit better for LT right now. So hopefully uh, that train can continue because last two starts, quality starts, right? Islanders um, get sick. And then obviously tonight's, or excuse me, last night against the Bruins. And whoever's in the net Saturday night, I'm hoping, I mean, here I am saying I'm hoping it's LT, even though I felt LT has been overworked. But uh you know, LT might be getting on a nice little hot streak right now. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed the Tendy battle last night. Uh, Swayman, equally as good there in net. That save on uh, probably, probably better, honestly. No disrespect, but Swayman just had rem remarkable, amazing, or multiple remarkable saves. Yeah, but none better, right, than that Barbashev uh, shot point blank where he kicks. Ooh. He's falling down forward, kicks up the right leg, and gets the block on the puck. I well, he tracked the puck. So that's the thing. Like when I saw it in real time, I'm like, lucky save, good for him. Highlight real save, but just you know, you see you see those saves where the goalie just, you know, puts up something and you know makes a save and it looks great. But then I saw this morning actually, I caught the north south view of it. And Swayman tracked the puck the entire time. He tracked yeah. the rebound. He got himself in position to do that. That's yeah, what makes sense. Well, he was looking, the puck, more... looking at Barbashev and the puck. And as yeah, he no, he it. Swayman yeah. was in the right spot. And 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 also not to take the thunder away from thunder. It's, it's it's thunder night for the for the Henderson Silver Knights. Tournament. Not to there take the go. thunder away from thunder night. Yes, there you go. Um, but Logan Thompson is also very good himself in similar saves selling out tracking the puck and you know there's it's one of the best things in hockey in my opinion to watch is how logan thompson never gives up on a puck and the fact that we were treated to swayman against thompson last night just you know that's fun remarkable remarkable night 
Yeah. Well, talk about the blown coverage on the winning goal. Was that on the pasta man again? That's segment three, dude. You just took my segment three. Okay. Um, no, I we won't go there. Watch no, we, that. We can save it. We can shelve it. No, 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 no. no. It's I, your I'm, day, I'm, man. I'm half, it's your birthday. I'm half joking. Like, I'm half not joking. Um, turn the Christmas lights back on. They're all the way back over there. No, I mean, I watched. So in real time, first of all, I again, I look at Stephen Marsh, and here's my exact quote. WTF Stone and Petrangelo together on the 3v3. Why are they out there? Why are they They're there? not the fastest players. They're not the fastest players by any means. And literally, it takes a quarter of a second to go by. And Stone looks like a freaking rock, you know, Rocket Richard out there blown by people <laughs> and goes in and makes a, a gem of a pass. I mean, you got to give him all the credit in the world for that pass to Petrangelo. And obviously, all Petrangelo do is finish it. Uh, Petrangelo starts his press game before he even gets asked a question talking about uh, talking about uh, how he needed that one and stuff. And then obviously it, it, it was a normal presser after that. But, you know, you watch what happened. I mean, Petrangelo just sneaks in like uncovered. You wonder what's happening there. Marchand was keeping an eye on Eichel. So I don't know if you put the blame on him, but Pastra, like the way he sold out, I think it was Grizzlick the other or Coyle. I don't know who, who the other defenseman was. Was on the ice for that for the game. Might have been oil. I don't know, but, but it yeah. was. I thought they were like, doing. It was line bad, change. and I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a scoop right I now. Um, another, I thought we saw another line change happening by an opponent. Like it, 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 it should have been. It, it would be, a line change. A blown line change would make more sense. Okay. Um, yeah, good point. So uh, I, I'm, I don't do this too often, but I'll go. I'll go the sources routes. Oh, um, sources after sources. the game. Okay, here, this is good. Sources after the game told me that pasta. And Marchand were nearby each other as they walked off the ice, and there was a shouting match going. There was a big shouting match between those two fellows last night, going down the tunnel into the locker room after the game. So, you know, I don't, I don't read too much into that. You know, you got a couple of very passionate individuals, and you say the wrong thing to Marchand, he's not going to let it go. Pasta, David Pasternak, I guess we should say, call him by his real name. Uh, very passionate, very good player. Would he have 57 points or something like that going into last night's game? So third in the league, I think. Currently. Yeah, third in the league. So that's you know when, when you when you watch an argument between two fellows like that, that's uh, that's that's interesting. So you know Bruins are in a tough spot with injuries as well, and obviously they wanted this game just as bad. And when you're on when 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 a goal looks that bad, I mean it looked bad. Like the first thing I said is WTF are the Bruins doing on that last goal? That was that was so bad. But credit the Golden Knights for finishing it. The Golden Knights have had these moments handed to them to them on a platter and not been able to finish it. So you know the Golden Knights had to finish it. Mark Stone made a beautiful pass. Uh, Petrangelo said that's why he gets paid uh, the way he does. And uh, you know all Petrangelo both goals for the Golden Knights. All they had to do was just have their stick down in the right place, and that that was the Eichel goal. So great, great, all, good game all around. Good game all around, and. See if they can avoid the letdown Saturday against the Cal. Gary Flames. Coming up next, and the night last night was almost ruined for VGK. Uh, the Count Gary Flames, the Golden Knights, they will meet on the ice. We preview that game next right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. It was almost ruined. Get out of here. Regardless of where you are in the current standings, we want to remind you, that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contest. What players do you think will take it? Oh. Take you to the wire to win 100 times your bet this week. Fans can also play, by the way, Daily Fantasy NFL, NBA, MLB, College football on Sleeper, you can connect with a lot of the other fans. Entries can be made in under a minute. All you have to do is uh, pick whether a stud like like Jack Eichel, now at 19 goals, uh, can get you there uh, to win 100 Pasternak. times your bet. Pasternak, okay, we could say that. Stunk up two games, two L's. Uh, yeah, they're still mad at him from that game in Denver the other night. Just lax <laughs> to win a hundred times your bet on sleeper. You need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard us, VGK fans. You could win a hundred times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention, nail your picks so that you can start winning big. Use the promo code locked on NHL, 
Get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use. Welcome back on Locked On Golden Knights, the Chris Golick birthday edition of the show. It is WTF coming up after this very short segment about the Cal Gary Flames. And, of course, don't forget, tomorrow morning, it's the Chris and Chris show. I was told to shut up last night. That's in my WTF segment. You can just say, you know, pass it on to the WTF segment. You don't have to go that in depth. Okay, so. VGK plays another hot team, Mr. Golic, the Calgary Flames. They've won five of seven, including a six to two win last night at the mullet. Um, it took all of 20 seconds for Michael Backlund to score a goal in that contest, part of a four goal outburst in the first period for the Flames. Igor Sharankovich scoring the hat trick in that game. Um, the Flames don't look now are two points behind Edmonton as they are vying currently for the second wild card spot. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't know that they were actually climbing out of the cellar a little bit, but according to the stats, I mean, you know, this is a team where every player theoretically is on the block to a degree, right? I mean, so many people want outs and, Dan Vladar, goaltender, is going to be a hot commodity for someone. <laughs> Crap, Vegas, this keeps happening. But going to be a hot commodity for somebody uh, who might potentially be looking for goaltender help. So this is last time the Golden Knights and the Flames played a couple of times, actually. Games go to overtime, right? So early in the season, uh, the Flames beat the Golden Knights like a bad goal at the end. I remember by it was Weaker, uh, Aiden Hill. Right? McKenzie Weaker. I don't know. Who I think he's a killer. I seem to think that he always scores. But I'll be. I'll and be then the yeah. last time, the last time the Flames Golden Knights got together, uh, Golden Knights needed a shootout or overtime, and just gave up a pretty big lead down the stretch, from what I recall that game. But this is a spot where you know you look at the game last Saturday against the Islanders. That's the type of effort that you would like to see. Would like it to be a boring game. Golden Knights score first have the lead the whole game and just never gets close um especially if Aiden Hill might potentially come back I mean I got no idea what's happening with these goalies nobody knows what's happening with these goalies and if you can successfully predict what's going to happen with these goalies go sit down at a Kino lounge mark a 20 spotter for a buck and change your life like that's how good you are predicting the future if you can predict the Vegas Golden Knights goalie conundrum and snafu and whatever other weird word you want to use, whatever weird adjective you want to use for confusing and troubling. That's what the Golden Knight situation is. So, I mean, looking at the Flames, you got some balanced scoring. You got a lot of players with double-digit points. Um, Blake Coleman, 35. Nazim Kadri, 33. Sharon Govich, 30. Elias Lindholm, all players who could be on different teams soon enough. Mikhail Backlund, 22 points. That's a lower season for him. Goalie situation, I think Markstrom is back in the picture. You yeah. can correct me if I'm wrong about yeah, that. Yeah, he played well last night. He's playing much better, too. Yeah, I mean, he's got a 9-10 save percentage, 2-6-6 goals against for he, – he's 12-11, and 11, but I don't read too much into that. When you 2 6, 6 is a little bit higher maybe than you'd want to see, but the 9-1-0 is fine, and again, he's not getting the run support, and he's probably facing 38 shots a game, which explains the high goals against. So – Golden Knights got to take care of business, regardless of who's on the ice, regardless of what weird things are thrown at the team. You hope tomorrow morning, Saturday, the Golden Knights, when they do their morning skate, there's no surprises as far as players not present. And but yeah, just take I think taking care of business is going to be the theme that should be playing in the locker room before the game starts. Two points, regulation get it done and just no stress no stress I, i'm not gonna be in the press box tomorrow me and uh me and chris will be up in the seats enjoying the game so that'll be a nice uh welcome change and we'll see if uh we'll see how that goes yeah and also uh tomorrow night the dads from cal gary will be in the stands it's the dad's trip and they had a cool photo yesterday Shut of uh, no well one of the dads was uh tying up the skate lacing the skate for his son so they Aww. laced up the skates for their kids which i thought was kind of cool 
I know that. Was so cool. you're gonna tell me they were downtown posted, taking pictures with the entertainers and or something like that? But that's fine too. Yeah, that was cool. And Ryan Husk has done a good job as the head coach coming up from the AHL level. And here's this is pretty interesting. This really stands out. So Nazem Kadri is playing on a line with two rookies, with Connor Zary and Martin Pospisil. He's playing with those two rookies on the third line, which I find really interesting. So Kadri and his like seven million dollar overpaid contract as a third line yeah. center in with, in with Cal two, with two, Gary with two rookies. With two Got rookies. It. With two rookies. I mean, so. listen, I like the ceremonial side of that. I I love when a veteran is helping players and whatever, however. They're they helping live. him. What are you talking about? And that's also fair, too. But, you know, <laughs> it's it, it's a cool storyline. But I think it also paints a picture of a just an awful situation and a dumpster fire that's happening in, in Calgary. And I, I almost compare that on a smaller scale to the Flyers, right? Who expected the, the Flames to be anywhere near 500 and at least – midway point of the season to be flirting one game over. with yeah, yeah i mean one game over but to be flirting with the potential of still not being completely out of it so they're not mm -hmm. going full on san jose sharks or anaheim ducks route so that's a good thing and you know it's a, a very storied organization tony there you go very storied organization and it's good for the fans at least that they have a competitive team and storylines and everything but We'll see if uh, if it if it goes to the chop shop and gets tripped up pretty good in the next uh, next I don't know thirty five or forty days as the trade deadline gets closer. Okay, we've gone this long without mentioning. Speaking of flops, Jonathan Huberdeau, he had an eighteen game drought without a goal, and he's got I think twenty one points so far. Oh boy, <laughs> twenty three points. Give give him his oh, give okay. Him his last night, he, okay. Give so he scored flowers. last night a couple of points. Who didn't? I want to look at his. I'm so scared to look. I mean, the Florida Panthers absolutely fleeced, fleeced. Yeah, the Flames when that when Matt Kachuk changed hands. And and to be fair, I don't think they. I mean, the 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 NHL knew that what was happening in Cal. Gary and the fact that they wanted to a lot of players wanted to leave and everything so that's probably why the fleece job happened but all right so Huberdo he's making he's making more money than Eichel he's mm -hmm. making 10.5 yeah Good god yeah and yeah, and, yeah. and it's through 28 29 I can't scroll any farther maybe it's even longer there's an arrow oh I'm sorry until the end of 2030 until the 2031 end of time. 20, 30, this is 31. worse than the friggin' um, the Russian Robin player Leonard? for Robin the new, for the Devils. No, dude, okay. this is like um, Robin Leonard's oh my contract God. as he sits no, around. No, this was like the first. Speaking this was about like pasta, the, he's eating a lot of pasta. Okay, <laughs> this was the first like I think time the NHL really cracked down on someone for cap circumvision. All right, hold on. I'm going to look at this up. We're not going next segment until I have this information. Okay, come on. We're not looking it up. I know this guy's name, and it's driving me nuts. So I'm going to find out right now. And yeah, sir. What is he talking about? Typing with one hand is a lot harder. Yeah, I, think it's, I know. I think it's how you, I think I'm typing like you right now. Do you type Tony like, like ch -ch 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 -ch? is that you? I or do no? because we had typewriters back in the day where the keys would stick. Yeah, it was awful. Uh, Kolvachuk. Kolvachuk. There we go. Kolvachuk. Okay. You got it. Call the okay. Chuck. They, they, the they, they tried to sign him for like a, a 37 year deal or segment. something. And a yeah. segment WTF. Okay. Coming up next, the we much anticipated early. What the Friday? Because there's a lot to talk about here. We'll get to all that next, right here on Locked On Golden Knights. We know we come to sports to escape for some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we talk for just a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, Pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like am uh, amoxicillin. Uh, yeah, not amoxicillin. Uh, right in the middle. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a doctor. And I don't play one on TV, or nor do I play one on the podcast. Right in the middle of the worst flu season, a lot of folks cannot get medicine. I've seen this all over the place on social media, and it's very scary. And I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if someone in your family got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from the life-saving medication that they needed 
and thankfully will be okay because of Jace Medical. They're so good. I ordered the Jace case and I've taken actually a couple of those antibiotics when I was sick a couple of weeks ago, just a head cold, but want to get rid of it. And uh, there's five different antibiotics and a long list of bacterial illnesses can be fought, UTIs, respiratory infections are going around, uh, sinusitis, skin infections, among us, many more. And uh, again, visit jacemedical.com, complete your physical encounter, it will be reviewed by a board certified physician, and medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy for a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important than now to be prepared for what could happen ahead. So go to jacemedical.com, use the offer code LOCKDOWN to get $20 off of your order. We are back on the WTF, Chris Golick birthday edition of Locked on Golden Knights. It is that time again, folks. It is time for WTF. What the Friday and kudos, kudos on a lot of unbelievable, a lot of unbelievable uh, takes here. Um, so I just want to start off. Uh, BR Open Ice last night had Grizzlick scoring the game winner. And not a PTA mom asked me, given my affinity for rigged content, did Petrangelo forget the script or what? WTF. Fire and away. WTF. I'll do one more. At VGK fan 702. Why isn't Tony Dasco crying the schedule's rigged when the bees had a day off and Vegas Bourne is playing back to back? Can't have it both ways, Dasco. Vegas Bjorn and didn't play back to back. <laughs> Vegas Bourne. This was in Bjorn. I didn't say Bjorn. Oh, <laughs> I bet. said Bourne. BGK. Okay. Uh, can't have it both ways, Dasco. And don't give me a state ran radio excuse either. Hashtag shut up, Dasco. WTF. That deserves one of these. There you go. That was All right, pretty good. so the Golden Knights have so many injury issues and drama. There was two call-ups from Henderson that maybe didn't make as much, didn't didn't garner three. as much attention. There three. No, there's there two more. Three. There was two. There was no, two no, no, more. There were three. No, no. Golden Pipes was out. He's listed as day to day. They brought up the anthem singer from Henderson. No. Yep, that's one of them. And then oh, they, uh, even oh, brought, the they even they even brought. brought they even brought one of the Zamboni drivers up from Henderson. It wasn't one of the regular Zamboni drivers. I blew it for so you, man. So injuries are... Oh, you're fine, Tony. You're fine. Injuries are apparent everywhere in this organization. And then a minor WTF. This isn't a knock, but it's just, just more of the weirdness that's happening. We couldn't find the snacks early on. They're gummy bears. There weren't enough gummy bears. Not enough uh, what? peanut M&Ms. The copier wasn't working. We didn't get the lines early enough. They had to go use like a nice color copier. And just so, why did I write down goalie? I wrote down something with goalie. Probably just because of uh, the Isaiah Seville situation. So it was just like oh, listing yeah. all the weirdness <laughs> off from the call-ups to not knowing what was happening with the goalies, to the anthem singer, to the Zam driver, to the snacks, to the copy machine. That 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 whatever, I don't know what the copy gangsters. machines on IR? The copy the machine is on machine. IR. It's yes, on IR. They're going to go office space on it. But I don't know. I would say Indian burial ground, but this is Vegas. I don't know what dead gangsters are in the grave well below T-Mobile Arena because whatever it is, they are haunting the, the poop out of this team right now. And the copy machines and the snacks upstairs in the, in the press box. There's just so much weirdness happening. And. You know, they need to like they need to sacrifice something like I think on center ice. And I think they need to eat like a bucket of chicken and you know sacrifice a live sacrifice a chicken the same way Pedro Serrano did in the first major league movie. I think that'll help everything. So WTF. Okay, I got a, a WTF from our good friend at Rita Homan one. Shut up, oh, Tony. Rita, we won. Shut up, Tony. We won. That's it. That's all. That's all that's important. WTF. Yeah, I could put in my place some time. I said as long as Vegas Bjorn, I can go there now. As long as Vegas Bjorn didn't score a goal, we're good. Uh, I, I, got, I got to make sure we get this one in. You might have it on your list, but if you're not, I don't. Have Vegas it, I, Bjornfoot? No, nothing about. No, I got no. Vegas so Bjornfoot. 
this came through on YouTube, Tony. Okay. This came through on YouTube. Skeller157, WTF, if you play the most games, sometimes you underperform. Now the team is tired. It must be too much practice. <laughs> that is the zing. That's off the charts. That's off the charts. Zing. Like that's if we're gonna rank WTFs, which we don't got time to do, but if we, we were gonna to rank that. and like give out that. like yeah. uh, some award at the end, you know, like a, like, a, like a three dollar gift card to McDonald's or something, that would be the top of my list right now. So Skeller one five seven, Bravo, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Uh, from at E runs our good friend Eric Rabbers, WTF special teams won a game. I'm faint. <laughs> I'm faint <laughs> for the that's, drama. That's, uh, I mean, oh, here's honestly, a good one. This... I think this is intended for you, Mr. Golic. Oh, what I do from at Cassie loves 1013. WTF is up what I call misfit cultist, giving more flack to those who aren't OG misfits, we're talking Petro, LT, Keegs, uh, Keegs, and Leonard, and are willing to cut others more a break. Marcia, so I'm talking about you. Just pisses me off. So, WTF. so because someone is an OG misfit, I'm supposed to like have a different way of talking about them? Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. Are you a cultist? <laughs> Just like that free, just like was it frozen? Let it go, man. Like, like Flurry's not a golden knight. Let it go. Derek England retired. Just let it go. Just did he? Let He's it signing more free. autographs now than he ever did. Okay. And fine, good for him. He's a great ambassador for the organization. But organization. I know would have loved to see Bettman give that Stanley Cup to Derek England, pass it to Mark Andre Flurry, and whoever else that this team you know traded away that everyone's all pissed off about. But uh. It's okay, folks. It's okay. Thing, things change, and there's going to be change in the offseason, regardless of what happens. Well, it's going to be a crazy offseason. But um, one more for me, I guess. Um, well, WTF, I made it to 43, the over hit there. But more importantly, WTF. The Golden Knights, or the Silver Knights have, in, in my opinion, the most, Im I won't say important because there's a lot of other things, but the most important promotional game as far as, the history of hockey goes in this town. One of the most fun experiences I had at the Silver Knights last year, last year at the Silver Knights game was the Thunder throwback game. Uh, the Silver Knights wear Thunder inspired jerseys from the Las Vegas Thunder. The 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 in game entertainment it's all like eighties driven and stuff. They show old promotional uh, commercials and stuff, but. It's not just about what the team does. It's about looking around at the fans, wearing all the Wranglers jerseys, wearing all these jerseys from the hockey teams that were here prior to the Golden Knights. And it reminds you that there's a rich hockey history. We're not we're not Boston. We're not Chicago. We're not Montreal. But there is a very good, rich hockey history here, and you can just feel it in this game. So the reason it makes the WTF list is they're doing this on Saturday afternoon just before the Golden Knights game. Now, listen, the idea of a hockey doubleheader sounds amazing, but it's not. It's not amazing to go to, I believe, a 3 o'clock game. If I'm wrong, someone can get me for this. To go to a 3 o'clock game in Henderson that ends between 5.15 and 5.45, depending on what happens. And then you got to drag your butt down to the strip to make the Golden Knights game at 7 o'clock. That's unfortunate. That's, I think, a miss by whoever decided to do the promotional schedule. This game should have its own night, shouldn't be impeded by a Golden Knights game because it's a great experience. Like, if I'm going to tell someone to go to one Silver Knights game over the course of the year, go to this game, especially if you're not from Vegas or don't know about the history of hockey in Vegas. It is just a great experience, and I think the Silver Knights and the Golden Knights as an organization made a mistake in scheduling that on a double header day, if you will, of hockey. Because who who wants to drive to the strip right at 545 from Henderson to hopefully make it to puck drop because it's a poop show once you get close to the strip. I'm getting misty. WTF. Eyed. WTF. Erratic Bonk should be here for that game. I think someone from the bygone days, of course. They did. Uh, Last year they had like eight or nine people up there yeah. from from it was it was awesome. I loved every second of it. Even the yeah, mascot, Tony. Even the mascot. 
I'm going to do. I know. <laughs> I've got a long story about where that. Okay, you, you told you, you told her last time. I forgot, but yeah, we're probably so not going to get it Sassente, today. Who is John Sassente, Who is the executive director of the Las Vegas Bowl? Uh, he right. was That's boom right. boom. He was boom boom. And That's so right. last year that. when they were doing this, I said, "Do you still have?" He had the mascot costume for some reason in his office. The head, boom boom's head, was up on the mantle and all that. And so he actually donated the entire boom boom costume back so i said where's the costume at bro are you gonna like dress up one one final time I said no donated it back to uh silver knights oh and one final wtf That's i am cool. so sick of boston oh, in vegas i am sick and tired of boston in vegas oh, once a year right? no no we got josh mcdaniels we have still residue of boston here Boston West. So Cassidy takes uh, the podium last night. First thing, I got to tip my cap to my good friend, Bill Belichick. What's wrong with Boston. That? Boston. I'm tired of Boston and Vegas. So this is a Vegas. question came up later about, about Belichick, too. I don't know. You probably turned, you probably threw your remote through the TV by this I point. I did. But state, um, state run press conferences. It was, it was a Boston writer. It was a Boston writer that asked the question. And Cassidy ended, you know, he said some high remarks and actually broke down a conversation that they had prior to the Stanley Cup final last year, which is really cool. But Cassidy did say, oh, well, AP, I guess that's how they referred to the coach for the Raiders, has done a great job. But I heard there's an opening there's, you know, alluding to Bill Belichick. So no, yeah, is there enough, is, enough is, is somehow Bruce Cassidy, like he's got the fishing pole, like, you know, trying to get oh, Belichick no. to Vegas, like can that hit? You're, you're you cover the Raiders. Can is 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 it AP's job, or is there a chance that the Golden Knights go elsewhere really fast, or the Raiders go elsewhere really fast? Uh, very good chance that Pierce gets the job. He's changed the culture overnight. Can you handicap Bill Belichick's possibility? Is that like a zero, or is he, he on the said, radar? He was really degree? nice in the press box last year during the College All Star game. He even said excuse me to another reporter because he almost spilled some chowder on him what do you think does cassidy like the red or the white chowder is clam chowder like is chowder. it red or red? I don't like okay chowder. I we're don't done know. we're done for the don't week know what color it's supposed to happy, be happy birthday mr chris gallic thank you appreciate thank it you. Thank tomorrow you. It's a, a pleasure to start the day outside of my family playing a happy birthday song by a, a bunch of cats on youtube that was that's what our, our family tradition is when there's a birthday in the house but uh that's funny yeah that's otherwise funny. it's a pleasure to get my second part of the day with tony and uh my uh locked on family so thank you everybody i do appreciate it all right chris and chris show tomorrow chris and son i'm sure if he drops anything tomorrow it might be the birthday cake or the remains tell him to eat some birthday cake on the air i like that i wonder if i get a cold stone cake tonight I wonder if I get a cold of stone course cake thank you tonight. so much especially to our everydayers and Super for my videos. man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco. So long for now. We'll see you again next week right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. And please take care.